Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. I'm out here on the river today, going to do some drift fishing with my friend Daniel from Catfish Sumo. Him and I are going to go on a long drift today. We've actually teamed up using two different launch sites. That way we can launch our kayaks at, at one boat ramp and then take out at another a few miles downstream. So that's going to allow us to save on time and be able to cover a lot of water today. Now it's right here at sunrise now. We're just getting set up. He's back here. You might be able to see him behind me there. but. Again, we're just going to cover a long stretch today and hopefully come across some fish. I've got a whole cooler full of big skipjack here, so we're going to put on some big baits and hopefully find us one of these river monsters. Let's get to it. All right, folks, down goes my favorite bait. That's a skipjack head and a big one at that. Got that on a Carolina rig, 10 aught must have demon circle hook. 40 pound mono mainline and I've got an 80 pound mono leader and the area we're going to be starting out at here it's going to be about 90 feet deep so going to start out kind of deep and then as we make our way on down river we'll be down in the 40s down through there so I'm going to get my bait set up here we'll put a midsection on one of the other rods and i've got some white bass too i'm gonna put a white bass head on the other one there i've got a three rod set up today and we're gonna do some drifting folks let's do it look right here y'all well i'm hooked up i'm hooked up man 82 feet hey that's a good fish too golly boom well he took it over hard didn't he oh daniel up there look at him he had all four of his lines snagged a second ago <laughs> I've been giving him hell. And while he's full with that, I'm hooked up here, Daniel. Don't worry, your snag's gonna be bigger than my fish. <laughs> I tell you folks, people reach out to me wanting to fish with me all the time, but in reality, you don't really wanna fish with me because you're gonna catch hell all day long. I'm taking my time with this fish here since I'm so deep right now pulling him up from 80 plus feet deep got to give them time to decompress the current where we're at right now is really moving we're over a mile an hour I was a mile and a half a couple minutes ago down through here so and you come up on a snag like Daniel did and that water comes up on you fast you can get all your lines tangled up and snagged in a hurry. This fish here really ain't fighting me. I thought he was a good fish when he took the rod over him. He was, he was a pulling with it. It is pretty good fish. He just didn't, he didn't hardly fight, man. He just, he's going to take off here in a second on us. That's what he's going to do. He's too calm coming up. Now he's going to take off. I knew he was too calm coming up. I said, this fish here, he felt good when he took the ride over and then he didn't hardly fight me. I mean, I was just pulling up dead weight the rest of the way. So I know he's still got a bunch of energy in him. They're right there, folks. That ain't a bad way to start off a day. Oh, I'm still tiring this fish out here a little bit, but you can see how deep we're at right there. 101 foot right now. I need to lower these other lines down. They're way too high off bottom. I was fighting this fish and didn't want to take the didn't want to take a second there to drop the others down. But don't be afraid to fish really deep water for big cats, man. guys there he is fish number one nice blue cat I, he finally took off on me up here i mean it was like he had a hard run there when he took the bait and then it was just dead weight i was pulling up after that but he finally he finally woke up when he got up here to the surface we got him tuckered out a little bit but nice ah, not a bad way to start out the morning here we're gonna let him go see you buddy 
that one ate a skipjack body piece. I'm gonna drop these other baits down. I'm in a hole right here, 110 feet. And, uh, you know, I've been asked that before. You know, how deep do I fish? And, and it really just depends on where I'm at. You know, down here, today where I'm at, we've got some deeper water, uh, 110 foot hole here. I'll fish it, man. But uh, I like to fish the deepest structure in a particular area. That's typically what I'm going to do. So if one section of the river, that may be 20 feet deep, if that's the deepest structure there. Out here today, well, you're looking at 110 feet. So it just depends on where you're at on the river. But, you know, these catfish, that deep water structure is their home. That's their sanctuary. So you typically go and find them there. But let's, enough of me talking. Let's get another bait on there and get these other lines lower down there where they need to be. Next bait going down. Another big hunk of skipjack. That's what the last one wanted. And we'll try to feed that to one of his friends down there. That's right here, folks. This is what you do when you're drifting. You got to watch your graph. You got to watch your depth changes and you got to constantly be raising your baits up and down to compensate. You want to be two, three, four feet off the bottom. That's going to be that strike zone there. But if you ain't paying attention to that graph, you're going to end up snagged. It's going to come up on you. There's going to be a lot of debris down there on bottom and that exposed hook is going to drag through that and you in for a rough day. Right now, I've come up here 94 feet, so that bait there was on bottom. Got to get it up quick. Here comes this one. This is the challenge of fishing, drift fishing with multiple lines out. If you're in an area that has a lot of changes, here I have talked about getting snagged, but I got to think I got snagged. But if you're in an area that's got a lot of a lot of ups and downs, it's in your best interest. I'm gonna reel this in. I think I got something on there. Not a fish, but a, just a piece of debris. But if you're in an area that's got a lot of ups and downs, you're really better off fishing with less rods. You know, go down to one or two rods, especially if you're new to drift fishing or if you don't know that particular stretch of the river. Like out here today, this is the first time I've ever fished this area. So I'm not sure what's coming up on me and, and all that. So I've got three rods here. Yeah, I was pulling something else up. I was pulling my other line up. <laughs> but that happens, folks. When you're moving at these speeds, right now I'm going at 1.2 miles an hour. So it'll come up on you quick. All right, I'm back in the game now. That's what I get for making fun of Daniel. <laughs> I'll make fun of him for getting all snagged up, man. I catch me a snag there, or catch my other line when I was dragging bottom with this one. That's all right, we'll get back in the game here now. This white bass head back here has something after it. That ain't acting like the fish that we want to catch though. We need him to not hook up. Yeah, he got it. He got it. He sure wasn't acting like a very big one, was he? Usually when the big one hits it, they just take that rod over and go with it. This one here did not do that. But I tell you what, he don't feel, he don't feel too bad. Maybe it's just because I'm pulling him up for so deep, but he don't feel too bad. He just hit it kind of funny. Right now, I'm in mean, 68 feet here, y'all. I mean, just a few hundred yards, we have went from 110 feet up to 68 feet. And it makes drifting hard because, especially at the speed we're going, I'm moving like 1.2 right now moving at those faster speeds and coming up so quickly it makes it hard to keep your baits and strikes on where they need to be but when you got this kind of depth change down there and all that debris on bottom it makes for some good areas 
for these catfish to be. So it's a productive, boy, he's going to pull now. This is going to be a better fish than what I initially thought, y'all. But uh, it's a it's a hard area to fish, at least drift fish anyway. But there's a lot of potential here in a place like this. Hey, Daniel, this is my second fish. When are you going to catch one? Oh, you didn't see those? Uh, no, I missed them. They must have been too small for me to see. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Daniel, folks. Y'all send him some sympathy cards for the hell I'm going to give him today. <laughs> Got the bubbles coming up here. That's what we want to see. Oh, he's going to pull now. I think this fish is going to surprise me, y'all. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm about to set him back a second. We're setting him back in the holder. I got to adjust these other lines or I'm going to be snagged. It's a whole lot easier. When you're drifting along and fighting a fish going into deeper water than it is coming up into shallower water. Because I sure don't want to get snagged with these other two rods while I'm fighting this one. All right, now we're back in the game. Oh, goodness. Yeah, y'all, this one. This one ate the bait kind of funny. He ate it like a dink, but I don't think he's going to turn out to be no, no dink. Get him up here and take a look at him. He may be a, well, I can barely see a tail down there. It's going to be another one, maybe a little bigger than the last one. Another quality fish. This one again ate the white bass head this time. He still ain't done. The other one hardly fought at all. This one won't quit. <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't hit the bait right. That big a fish should not have been sitting down there just pecking like he was. He tricked me. Tricked me in a good way. Get my other lines adjusted here before we land him because I'm all the way up 59 feet now. Oh, okay. No. Get this one on in here now. <laughs> I told you all, that's a good fish for how he hit the bait. I didn't even want him hooking up because I thought for sure it was a small fish. He ate that white bass head. But that's a quality fish. Look at that, man. Nice. I think that one's probably a little bigger than the, than the first one. Spun around here, the sun behind me. I, uh, I'm about to get my other line snagged here. I'm at 55 feet right now, so I'm going to have to... Let's get rid of this one quick here, y'all. i got to get these other lines up. See you, buddy. How you going? So I'm gonna get snagged. It's a this ain't a, the type of fishing you do to just kick back and relax. When you got this kind of contour changes, it's it's really tough to drift. Like I said, if you ain't if you're new, you know, inexperienced at this kind of thing, I wouldn't recommend taking a stretch of the river like this, where you've got all these ups and downs. Don't start drifting on this type of body of water here. Pick it up right there, still hooked it. Let's get it back down. You know, pick you out an area that's where you don't have all those changes. Get you kind of a just a ledge with not a lot of depth change. And practice on those areas and practice at, at places that will give you slower drifting speeds. And then once you get proficient and get good at it, then come out and hit some areas like this where you're gonna have to make quicker decisions and be on top of things. And uh so far today, drifting down through here is paying off. That's two good fish for me. Daniel over there, zero. He's still got the skunk. <laughs> He'll get him one or two today for sure, though. I got my banana. You brought a banana again? No, I forgot it. Oh, he forgot his banana. Last time we fished together, he had a daggone banana in the kayak with him, and I caught a whopper out here that day, and he didn't, so 
we blamed the banana. So today he was smart enough not to bring one. Well, right now he's still got the skunk. So we're going to uh, keep making our way along. Like I said, we're covering a big stretch out here today. Used two launch sites. We met up here at one site, dropped his kayak off, uh, went down and, and parked his parked his truck. That way we can load everything up in his vehicle where we take out and then come back up here to my car. And uh, you know, doing that allows us to to save time first off because we're we're not having to launch somewhere and then travel upstream to start our drift and two it allows us to cover more water because we can just we don't have to we can expand our range from what it would normally be uh, in a kayak which is you know kind of limiting so uh yeah hopefully it's going to be a productive day out here on nickajack today i don't know if i mentioned that uh in the opener there but uh we're on Nick Jack Reservoir of the Tennessee River. I normally fish at the top of it on Fort Loud and Watts Bar. This down here is is about an hour and 45 minutes from my house uh, to get down here, so I don't ever come down here. But there's a lot of big fish caught in this area, and Daniel lives down here, so uh, it's it's a good time for me and him to get together. I'm fishing a bass tournament on Nick Jack. I mean, uh, on sorry, on Chickamauga tomorrow, which is the reservoir right above here. And so I've got to do a board check this afternoon, have them take a look at my board, sign off on it, uh, and check my license and all that. And so uh, I was going to be down here anyway, so I hit up Daniel's like, hey, I'm going to be down here today anyhow. You want to get together fishing? He's like, yeah, man, I'm free. So we out here and soaking these baits, and hopefully we're going to get on some more good fish today. That's two, so I'm optimistic we're going to get on some more. Look right here, y'all. Daniel's got doubled up here this could be the same fish. both them rods got hit he thinks it might be the same fish i think he's got two different fish on there you know I, I was up two fish to none on him he said heck with that i'll just catch me two at the same time hopefully i'm close enough to here to get some decent footage on the camera so you done lost that one you know what the problem is, Dan? You ain't got that catfish sumo jersey on. That signifies professional. Professionals don't lose fish like that. Yeah. Well, you still got the other one on over there. For now. You better put that jersey on right quick, though, or else you ain't going to land him. <laughs> well, we can't see the fish, but we can see catfishsumo.com on the side of your kayak. That's where you go for all your catfishing supplies, folks. Right now you go to catfishsumo.com slash Black Friday. Oh, you may not have heard that from him, folks. Catfishsumo.com slash Black Friday. Black Friday. That's, that's where all the deals are right now. He's running specials for the holidays. He's going to have to pay me extra for this advertisement, too. <laughs> I'm done giving this stuff away for free, Daniel. <laughs> that's a nice fish right there folks Daniel got him a good one over there all right that's one catfish sumo fish attention's back on me though because I got a rod right here got hit yep I got one on right here sorry Daniel that was your five minutes of fame right there buddy <laughs> it's my turn again <laughs> Yeah, folks, we've got on some fish here. Daniel got him that and over there. I just got on this one here. He's going to take off on me. We're just drifting along. That's the nice thing about drifting is you'll cover a big stretch of water oftentimes and just not have any action at all. And then, like Daniel had, up two rods go down over there. And a couple minutes later, here goes my rod. And... You just go through them, go through some active fish. Right now we're 46 feet here. We've come up this section through here is a lot shallower than what we had there early on. That's gonna be the smallest one of the day for either one of us here. Still, I'll take it, man, it's action. That one again for me on that skipjack body piece. Well, there that one is, folks. That's the one that took the attention back off of Daniel and put it on me. 
where it belongs. This is my channel, doggone it. <laughs> Well, folks, you ain't gonna see none of it because he's too far away and I can't zoom in on this camera, but Daniel just had a massive takedown a second ago. I'm curious to see what this fish is because, I mean, he took that rod over hard. I moseyed on back up here to see if we can get some better footage of this fish that Daniel's hooked into. I drifted right over top of that dang fish. Now, he said, heck with me, and he waited on Daniel's baits to come through. What, what cut of the bait did that need? Um, that took a chunk of skipjack. A chunk, okay, a body section there. That's been the, that's been what they've wanted out here this morning. So far, anyway. We've covered a lot of water out here already, folks, just, just from the speed we're drifting. It's not as fast down here where we're at now, but we're still moving 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Right now, we're in I'm sitting at 43 feet where I'm at, so we've had a big range of depths from 110 feet here to 43 feet where we're at. There's just a lot of a lot of elevation change here along this section of the river. But you can see here where we're at. I mean, there's just like a daggone mountain on each side of us here. So it makes sense that the river bottom would be have them kind of contours too. Yeah, man, that's a good fish. But Daniel, I've told you, you can't be on here catching bigger fish than me on my video. It's got to get edited out. I'm the star of this show. This ain't the Catfish Sumo Show. You got your own YouTube channel. He does, folks. Catfish Sumo on YouTube. He puts up some whoppers on there. He got on some really good fish here two or three weeks ago. Mud. Mud? Mud. He's been down there in it. Yeah, hold him on up there. That's a good fish, man. That's a quality fish anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. awesome. All right, folks, we got our pitchers. We'll do the release here. We got pretty clear water out here today. Probably while we were finding some of these fish so deep earlier, just because it's so dang, so dang clear. There. there he goes. Back where he come from rod right here got hit that's on that skipjack body piece again and it's going down yeah man all right i said it was my turn so here we go i don't think this one here is going to be no monster though this one here feels more like a he's down there rolling he's he's like a dink one of them small old dink sized ones, but you know what? It's action. I got plenty of bait today, so I ain't gonna run out. If these small fish want to play, I'll play with them. I'm just out here to have a good time, folks. That's what it's all about. Come out here, enjoy the day, get a tug on the line, and we're doing it. Well, there he is, another little small one. Let's let him go real fast. Daniel didn't see me catch that fish, so he won't know that it's his turn again. We'll just skip his turn and I'll be ready to catch another in here. Well, this headpiece just got thumped. There it goes. There it goes. Oh man. Oh man. Yep. No, oh, that's that same big head that I've been soaking all morning. That was the biggest skipjack that I'd caught. And I said, I want that head on there. That's a that's a big bait. Just doing his thing, there he goes. <laughs> He's just a pulling. That's so much fun, y'all. That's nice, you know, to, it's a long drive for me to come down here, but this section of the river is just beautiful down here. It's not as developed as it is back home. We got all that money back home, and everywhere you go is just house after house after house. Tons of pleasure boat traffic down here today. Other than just one jerk that blew right up on us. And a John boat. Hasn't been any boats down through here. 
and the fishing today has been pretty good too. I certainly can't complain about it. Definitely been worth the drive. I don't know. I don't know how big this one's going to be. He was about 55 feet deep when he ate this bait. Like I said, our depth it just keeps fluctuating. We've had to just really be on top of it. Keeping an eye on it, adjusting our lines up and down just to keep from getting snagged. But by doing that, we're able to cover a lot of water. And that's something I recommend. If you own a new body of water or you're new to catfishing and you don't know your lake or river or whatever you have there, drift. Troll if you don't have current, you know, cover water. That's how you're going to learn spots and where fish are going to be and you know over the course of time you do that you'll start you'll start noticing patterns and be able to apply that to other sections of your lake or river or other bodies of water when you go fish there yeah this is another good blue look at that one right there that's gonna be my biggest one of the morning going to be the biggest one of the morning for me I don't think he's done yet either. I'm going to have to tire him out before we bring this one in. Watch him swim here, y'all. Our water here, like I said, it's the clear. You can see him down there in the water, man. He's just a digging. That's a good fish. I'll take that anytime I can get him. There's a lot of good fish down here on this section of the river. A lot of big ones caught here on Nickajack. Oh, 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 oh. Boy, he started to flop as I was bringing him in. It was either going to break my wrist or I was going to have to let him go. Man, that's a that's a good fish right here, man. He swam through my other. I was wondering, I thought, maybe I got another fish here on this on this rod with the white bass head, but this one had just, he swam through it down there. This right here is what he eat, though. That skipjack head, man. I put that on there for a reason. I was like, that's a big skipjack head. Y'all that watch my videos regularly, you know I love them skipjack heads. I'm going to try to get this thing untangled right here if I can before we hold this fish up. But uh, I know today having that big skipjack head, I'll deal with that in a minute. I was going to have a chance. Oh, crap. Well, shoot far, folks. That's what happens, man. I wasn't paying attention to my graph. I'm hung up. All right. Let me deal with this fish quick here because as fast as we're drifting. I got problems, Daniel. I was making fun of you earlier. and Look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a smart aleck in every crowd, folks. <laughs> That's a good fish, man. Got the sun behind me. That's all right, but it's all about the fight for me. And man, that was a good fight. He was a good time. Biggest one of the morning so far for me. Hey, Daniel, if you could catch them this size, I wouldn't have to come up there and, and get closer to you for the camera to see them. <laughs> All right, folks, so I gotta let this fish go and try to get this rod here unsnagged before I spool my reel. Man, that's awesome. I, before I do that, I'll tell you what, I'm already snagged anyway, heck with it. I'm gonna just motor around here toward the sun so I can get a good picture of this thing. All right, let's try it again with the sun now. Nice. All right, folks, time to tell him bye. We'll let him swim off. He'll be waiting on us next time. All right, see you, buddy. There he is, a little tail slap on the way out. Now, let's get this rod undone. Folks, look at Daniel up there struggling. He's making fun of me and whatever I just went through and got snagged, he's in it now too. <laughs> that serves you right, Daniel. <laughs> Got the old barge going by here. 
people ask me all the time there ain't no barges go up river by you or well, they are i just don't normally film them because well what the heck's the point all these other youtubers they the ones with b-roll on this youtube channel we focus on the fish catching <laughs> get this body piece up here something's eat it too well we just keep skipping daniel's turn don't we <laughs> You know, Daniel, when you got it, you got it. That's all I can say about it. Well, these fish know who the star is. They know who's going to make them internet famous. <laughs> oh, I love giving him hell, folks. It's a good time. This fish here, though, ain't going to measure up to the last one. This one here, we need to we need to tell this one here to go go find Daniel's baits. That's the kind of fish he catches right there. <laughs> well folks, there's us another one. Action. Bait stealer. Dink, whatever you want to call him. That's what he was. And he did get our bait. Well, like I said, that's alright. I got plenty of bait today. We'll put us another piece on. Rid of that old tail piece there. I don't ever like them tails. I don't do no good on them. Put this on here. Get the scales off. Don't want them on there messing up with your hook set. There it is. Down it goes. Send us another bait down here, and I got to get repositioned. That fish kind of pulled me off where I want to be. We're just drifting along the edge of the channel right as it starts to come up off the bottom and that's kind of that contour line these fish follow their little pathways highways whatever you want to refer to it as and we have come across a few today all right guys me and daniel's back to where we started this morning we loaded up on his trailer and hauled my kayak up here back to the start we had a productive day got several fish got some big fish so it was a fun time worth the drive down here he's hiding over here off camera right now but uh anyway guys he owns catfish sumo catfish sumo.com slash black friday you go get you some deals up to 50 percent off on some of that stuff how's that for a sales pitch daniel that was Way to pitch. Am I hired? Yeah, absolutely. I got this salesman. Billy Mays ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're out of here. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.